So in today's video, we are going to be evaluating different maps and data on the impacts of climate change on our planet. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, I appreciate a like, subscribe, and let's do this. Okay, so I wanna begin the video with this piece of data right here. Essentially, what it's showing you is the perfect human niche in terms of climate. So currently, this zone of perfect human habitability is right here in the US. And due to climate change, this is the projected perfect habitability by the year 2070. And we can see a big shift up north. And this is the habitability if climate change is really bad. So shifts even further up north, making a lot of the southern US completely uninhabitable, or at least very unpleasant for humans to be in, work, and just be productive. And this map here is showing areas of extreme heat between the year 2040 and 2060. So extreme heat is defined as days above 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And this kind of weather is actually dangerous for human habitation. And right here in Arizona, there could be a county that sees six months out of the year where the temperature is above 95 degrees. And this map is showing the economic damages from climate change over the same time period. So it includes things like rising energy costs, lower labor productivity, poor crop yields, increasing crime, and a bunch of other derivatives. And again, we can see that the Southwest, especially Arizona, is going to suffer. The Gulf Coast, along with all of the Southeast Coast, including the entire state of Florida, but then some other states like up in New England are actually going to slightly benefit from climate change, making them more productive in terms of farming, labor, and all those metrics. So all the data suggests that the south of the country is going to be very negatively affected by climate change, and the north might actually benefit a little bit or stay the same. The area of the country that's going to be most negatively affected by climate change over the past 60 odd years has been exploding in population. Texas up 261%, California 271, Arizona up 824%, and states like Maine, Michigan, North Dakota have essentially no population growth over this time. So the fact that people are moving to and living in the wrong spots is just going to amplify the negative consequences of climate change for the US over the next century. And eventually this trend of migration is gonna have to flip in the opposite direction. I'll go ahead and leave this website linked down below. This is an extremely beautiful piece of data and this is mapping where the earth will become uninhabitable. This is looking into the year 2100 and it includes factors like heat, water stress, rising sea levels, and tropical cyclones. And essentially, the more brightly colored the map is, the more severe these things are going to be. And the height of the column simply indicates the population density of that area. And we can immediately notice that when you look at all the factors combined in the year 2100, India is going to be hit extremely hard by climate change. And that's unfortunate because so many people live here. And again, that just amplifies the effects of climate change when so many people live in a negatively affected area. There's another hotspot around Beijing and China. And if we filter by extreme heat, no, it's not because of that. Water stress? Yeah, water stress. So the north of China is really gonna suffer when it comes to fresh water. And again, coming back to the US, the Southwest is the hotspot for climate change. And other places like Canada, the Great Lakes, is a much better spot. Now, do you guys know that New York City is so hot that it's officially considered a subtropical climate zone. Yeah, so back in 2020, they actually had to reclassify the climate of New York City. Before 2020, it was categorized as humid continental, but now subtropical. And to give you some data on this, this is the total days per year on average when the temperature in New York City reached at least 70 or 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So in the 2010s, on average, there was about 156 days per year where the temperature was above 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and 19 days it was above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And as we go back in time, the number of these hot days just continues to fall. So I hope you guys enjoyed going through the data with me. I'll leave most of this stuff linked down below so you guys can explore it. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.